And you're very welcome back. Now, Lorna Byrne became an international bestseller when she wrote the iconic book, Angels in My Hair. While some of us may have felt a garden angel watching over us, Lorna Byrne says that she has seen them all her life and she's back to answer more of your questions. Thank you for staying with us. Lorna, we didn't get much questions in earlier yeah, on. You were, yeah. We were talking to you Too so much. Too busy asking our own. To, yeah, we were asking our own questions. So let's get straight into it. This is Barbara in Galway. How do I know my guardian angels are with me or real? I want to believe, but there's a sceptic in me that's saying it's not sure. Is there anything there? Is there something out there? And how can I connect with it? And what makes a difference? What, what will make a difference in my life? And we have had a few people in going, being very sceptical about yeah. this. And yeah. you must get that all the time, people going, oh. this is a load of nonsense. Yeah, no, no, I do. But I always say to everybody, you know, what have you got to lose? Right. You know, whether you're sceptic or not, give it a go, mm -hmm. you know. And go, is that what you'd say to search. Barbara, who's sort of saying, like, in the sceptic me, that, like, she, she thinks that yeah. they're, but she's, yeah. she's, her, she doesn't want to, she's saying, is it real, is it not real, what's I, going I, on? I think maybe she should stop doubting. Okay. You know, because she's doing an awful lot of doubting there. So she's kind of believing it is real, and then maybe it's not, maybe if she asks for something and she doesn't get it. I always say, if you don't get something, there's a big reason why you didn't get it at, at the time. Um, but I think she could ask for a sign, but always ask for something little because the guardian angel has to work very hard. You know, sometimes someone would say, well, I asked for flowers. And they might say, well, I never got any flowers. But you have to remember your guardian angel has to ask another guardian angel, say yours, would you kindly get a bunch of flowers yeah. for himself? And okay. that thought is coming into your or maybe mind. maybe they might not come in the form of a bouquet of flowers it handed may, to you and you missed be, it. Or... It could be a, a child handing you a little flower and to you as an adult, that's not good enough. You know, we find, sometimes we kind of say to ourselves, things aren't good, good enough in that, in that way. But ask for a sign and maybe just for her to stop doubting. And what's the difference between guardian angel and gut instinct? Is it the name it's, on things it's, sometimes? It's the name. It's the name on things. It's our guardian angel communicates with us in so many different ways. And sometimes we might say, at times I get a really strong gut feeling, you know, that I should go left when I go down the road, but I ignored it and I went the other way and now I'm raging. Mm. I went the other way. But again, that's just another way our guardian angels communicate with us and sometimes it's just a thought that comes into our head or sometimes it's just um, you keep getting a particular message you know from different people they keep saying the same thing and that again is trying to get a message across yeah. to you okay okay um, we'll move on anonymous. then um, can I possibly ask says an anonymous texter if my dad John is happy in heaven I miss him so much but I know he's always watching over me and my family can you thank him for the white feather that came to my back door on Christmas Eve? And I said to That's you lovely. off air, you know, is it hard for you to have so many vulnerable people who are hurting and missing people laying parts yeah. of their future happiness yeah. in your hands and asking for, for messages? It, it, it is hard, but I, I think one thing, like, you have to remember when your loved one dies, it's only the body that has died. I can't prove it to you. But I know it's only your body that dies. You actually live. And that's why she got the feather. Again, that Do was the sign. Do the feathers? The white yeah. feather? Because I tell you why. So My husband, Carl, when his feather. mother died, asked for a white feather. He said, yeah. just give me a sign that you're OK. okay. And a, a day later, he, we came into the sitting room and there was a white feather in the middle of the sitting room. Yeah. And he has it in a little yeah. box. Yeah. And he totally believes that his mother sent Definitely. him that white feather. Definitely. I, you shouldn't doubt it. Um, because those kind of things, spiritual things, are happening all of the time. It is the soul of our loved one telling us not to be afraid, not to be worried. I'm fine. I'm perfect now. I may not have been perfect in my human body, but now I'm perfect and I'm happy. And they're just helping us through that grief, 
because that grief can go on for years. It can go on for your whole lifetime. I mean, yeah, some people never get over it. And some people process, never, yeah. never get over it. And your loved one is trying to help you. And, and God allows that. And I think that is something wonderful. So we don't die. That's what I tell people. We don't actually die. It's only our body that dies. You and know? But do you believe then that people, if you're saying you don't die, that we should always talk to people, yes. our, our deceased, yes. talk to them as yes. if they would be still there? Write them a letter. You can give out to them even, I, I would say to people. You can. Because a lot of the times when we lose a loved one, we can be kind of a little angry, a little sad. Oh, yeah. Why did you leave me? Why did you go? Mm. You left me I'm in this situation. Now, yeah. I'm on my own. All of those things. And we need to get them out. And we either need to say them out loud or write that letter to our loved one. And maybe a hundred times you will write it. Because every time you write it, it'll get longer. Because so you'll don't think end of the more. relationship necessarily or the communication. No, you don't. It's just different now. Yeah, it is completely um, different. I, I think this is a very interesting one. I recently spent a lot of time in hospital. I had a lot of time to think and feel like I'm at a crossroads in my life in general. I love my profession, but it's draining me mentally and physically. Myself and my partner work so hard around the clock, but we've nothing to show for it. Have you guidance? So they're, they've yeah. good jobs, but they're drained mentally and physically, and they just want to know, have we reached a crossroads? Is there something there? Can our angels help us? Well, it's obvious there's something there. Yeah. You know, that is very obvious. So they, they, need, they may have good jobs and getting good money for it, but you have to, it's like, you know, the material things. Is it worth your life? Mm. You know, can you do it a little less? Can you look for a four day week or a three day week? Or can you, you know, go to your boss and still do a really good job? You know, work from home a little work bit from more. Work from home a little bit more. Do, do, do things in a different way because I, I would meet people all of the time. And what way would I say it? When a loved one is dying, they would give up all the material things in the world that they have if their loved one could live. Yes. And, and why should we wait till we get to that stage? Yeah, to know you what's know, truly to know important. What's, what's truly important. important to you, yeah. Your friends and your family are the most important thing. Companionship, you know, um, reaching out to each other, spending time with each other. You, you can't buy that. You know, but yet in the world today, we're being taught everything is, you know, buy when you're finished with it, throw it away. Mm. But you can't throw away your friends. You can't throw away those you love because then you're lonely. Then you have missed out on life. And no one ever says on their deathbed, I wish I'd worked more. No, longer they hours. never no. It's they always never about do. spending time it's and quality I wished time. I'd, I wish I'd spent more I'd time spend with my family. Time. Or I wish I'd yeah. spent more time doing this. It's like with your children, you should be spending more time with your children. With your grandparents, you should be spending more time. But we're all the time putting work and the material things, what we're actually being brainwashed to do in one sense. Mm. We're putting all of that first. And then when something bad happens in our lives, we find it extremely hard to cope with. And again, that's what I was saying earlier, the young, the children, the teenagers are finding it very hard to cope with life, you know, because we have set it up in a way that life is only about work. It's only about the material mm. things. There's, and there's, you're not perfect in the sense of you have to be. Yeah, there's no, nobody's yeah. perfect. And um, there's a very long email here. I'll, I'll cut it down. And it's just, they just want to know, have you ever heard of this type of experience? They were um, in a, a, on a beach at a restaurant in Portugal. And for three of them in a mad group, it went quiet to them. And for about six or seven seconds, even though people yeah. were still and the beach was going on, they felt a, a silence and a, just this sense of... All three of them. Yeah. Three yeah. of them out of the yeah. six people said, and they went, yeah. did you experience that? And three of them did, that everything just went quiet, nothing was happening, even though the world was going on around them. Yeah. But the other three didn't feel that. And they just yeah. wanted to know, have you ever experienced that? That is a spiritual experience. Yeah. You know, so I would just say to them, have more faith, believe a little bit more. And allowed that to happen a little bit more because 
in that happening, they can hear a bit more clearly maybe of what's going on in their life or, or something in a sense down the future. But I would often meet priests and nuns and rabbis and, you know, of all the other faiths. They would love to have had that spiritual ex experience. They just say, we pray a lot. Why do the ordinary people have those spiritual experiences? And we don't. And just yeah. another one here, um, a person who's hearing voices and um, a, a voice calling Mammy. And she, d mm. she, doesn't, she doesn't quite know what it means. Well, I have to make this really clear. And once mentally she is okay, mm. you know, everything is okay. Um, she could be hearing Mammy because there's a little soul visiting the house wherever she lives. And she's just open spiritually and hears the little voice. But that should be a comfort to her. You know, um, she should kind of say, you know, I know that little soul is visiting. And for whatever reason, that's okay. Mm. And, you know, just ask then for that little soul to, to go back home to heaven. It doesn't need to come anymore because that's where mommy is as well. Okay. Well, I must say, Lorna, yeah. it's just been absolutely fascinating to be in your presence. I want to really, you know, get at you and yeah. represent the critics who say, what about preying on vulnerable people and taking money for them? But it's just the way about you and the sense that you speak. I mean, what's wrong yeah. with a little bit of magic in life, I say? I, I think we all need uh, that little bit of na magic in life. We all need, need hope. Like, as I said, said before, that is one thing. I never realised there were so many messages in the books and, and now hearing from young people, teenagers and those in their early 20s saying they're receiving so many messages from the books and how much it's helping them in their lives. And I have had people come up to me and, and say, you saved me from committing suicide. I was on the verge of doing it. Well, yeah. You know, well, I, I mean, as, as you sort of say, yeah. look at that. That is that is somebody. If they do get um, help for yeah. it, but I mean, if people are feeling that way, they should yeah. be getting proper they help be anyway. Alongside, yeah. Yes. Uh, alongside yeah. that as yeah. well. So. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so Lord, much for coming in to us. Really appreciate um, it. Now, up, up next, we're back over in the catwalk with more fabulous looks for the mother of the bride or the groom. We'll see you in a few minutes.